Do you remember that scene from Inception when Cobb is falling into the water? The time seems to run slower and suddenly the whole sound drops in frequency. A similar effect can be heard during the famous bullet time scene in The Matrix. How to create such an audio effect? Hi everyone, this is Jan Wilczek from thewolfsound.com and today we're gonna do something really cool. Namely, the slow motion sound effect. Or in more general terms, the variable speed replay algorithm. First of all, let's consider what would happen if we removed every other sample from our signal. Let's assume that we have a sign at 500 Hz sampled at 4 kHz. So we get exactly 8 samples per signals period. Now, what happens when I remove every other sample? Now, as you can see, we now only have four samples per signals period, but the output sample rate stayed the same, which means that we effectively shortened our signal. But since we shortened our signal, we also shortened its period. Which means, in this case, that we raised its frequency two times. Such process of removing samples is called decimation. The same thing happens if we insert the samples. So now, if we insert the samples as means of neighboring samples, we effectively lengthened our signal. What with a constant sample rate means that we effectively lowered the frequency two times. It turns out that we can arbitrarily manipulate this time frequency relation in order to get the effect of a changing speed of replay, similarly to the effect that we hear when we are rewinding a cassette player. Now let's express that in mathematical terms. Let's denote V as the speed of time or the relative speed of rewinding a cassette player. In our initial example, V was equal to 2 because we got the effect of playing the original signal two times faster at the output. In the second example, V was equal to 0.5 because we lowered the frequency two times. We could say that V is the relative time flow or the speed at which we want to replay our cassette. Let's consider the time period of our signal. At the input, it was equal to Ts in. Removing V minus 1 samples from each block of V samples, we effectively shortened our signal V times. This quantity is equal to the signal's period at the output. Now taking the reciprocal of this formula, we get to the frequency domain.
we see that on the left hand side we have the formula for the frequency at the output. And on the right hand side, we have the formula of V times frequency at the input. This is the basis of the variable speed replay algorithm that I will discuss now. We want to create an algorithm that effectively changes the frequency of the signal we put in, therefore creating the effect of different time flow speed. We denote V as the relative speed of the time flow. In order to do this effectively, we need to present V as a ratio of two integers, namely m and n. With this notation in place, our algorithm looks as the following. We have the input signal here, and then we upsample it by a factor of m, which means that after each sample, we insert m minus 1 samples, which should be the mean between the two adjacent samples in the input signal. Effectively, we can insert m minus 1 zeros, because in the next step, we do low pass filtering, which will average the samples for us, so we don't have to do it beforehand. The first low pass filter has its cutoff frequency set at fs in over 2m. To remove the repeated spectra components that were pooled from beyond the Nyquist frequency. We then low pass filter the signal again. This time with the cutoff frequency equal to fs in over 2n. We do this in order to prevent aliasing after the process of downsampling by a factor of n. Note that we do downsampling last because it's effectively removing samples from our signal what could potentially remove some information that was present in it beforehand. And then we get the process signal at the output. To summarize, it looks very similar like a typical resampling scheme. So we change the sample rate of the signal, but the output sample rate stays the same. So we effectively manipulate the relative frequency of the signal. As you can see, this algorithm is simple yet powerful. That is why I dedicated this video only to theory. And in the next one, we'll do some coding to put it into practice. I highly encourage you to check out the related article on thewolfsound.com, which I link to in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, I highly encourage you to subscribe and hit the thumbs up. And if you're interested in the topic of sound processing, and especially this kind of audio effect algorithms, I have two propositions for you. First of all, I'd like to encourage you to check out the book Digital Audio Effects, edited by Udo Tsulza. It comprises most of the audio effects and algorithms you could ever want to learn. I put the link to the book in the description below. Secondly, I've started Wolf Sound email list. So if you want even more content related to sound programming and in particular these type of algorithms, then I highly encourage you to subscribe to it 
so then I can reach to you and we can stay in touch. If you want to see more videos on sound effects, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you and see you in the next video.